This is how the Christmas season begins in our house. I feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. I feel it in my toes. Over the years, Love Actually has become one of my favorite romantic comedies, up there with When Harry Met Sally or Philadelphia Story or Eat, Drink, Man, Woman. If you hate this movie, then this video is not for you. You can save yourself some time. You probably already know that Love Actually is made up of a convoluted series of tangentially related love stories in London over the five weeks leading up to Christmas. The protagonists range from the Prime Minister to a caterer, advertising executives and artists, a washed-up old rock star, and a ten-year-old drummer. It mixes grounded pathos with slapstick and outright fantasy, and mixes tenderness with raunchy humor. Everybody finds love. Some keep it, some blow it, some are just surprised what love looks like. No one finds it where they would expect, except for maybe Andrew Lincoln, who walks away once he realizes that he's just feeding his futile obsessions. Much of the movie is pretty funny. Richard Curtis's writing, which can be a little one note. Be motherless mongrel. I look increasingly like my Aunt Mildred. Uh, unfortunately, she cannot speak French, just like you. Loser. My terrible taste in pie and... You're a lonely, ugly, and you must accept it. Get spruced up and fleshed out thanks to great performances by everyone in England. Between this and Harry Potter, the entire British acting profession must have been kept afloat throughout the 2000s. But the thing that really gets me with Love Actually is the insane number of times it makes me cry. I am admittedly a sap, and I tear up during movies I don't even like. But it's Christmas, and at Christmas you have to tell the truth, and the truth is, here's a clicker for how many times I well up while watching this dumb comedy. Whenever I get gloomy with the state of the world, I think about the arrivals gate at Heathrow Airport. When she first mentioned what's about to happen, I said, over my dead body. And she said, no, Daniel, over mine. But then when he sometimes does come out, it's, it's obvious he's been crying. Well, truth is, actually, I'm in love. <laughs> Aren't you that young to be in love? And since bullies only respond to strength, from now onward, I will be prepared to be much stronger. And the president should be prepared for that. It's my favorite time of day. Driving you. É parte mais triste do meu dia. Deixá-lo. I look quite pretty. <laughs> You trust me? I trust you. The tua lentidão a bater a máquina. The tua má condição. What is making better? No. Hey, how you doing? Don't do that, my darling. Well, that's a surprise. All I want for Christmas is you. Hi, babe. How's it going? Yeah, it's a little long. It might be that the people I love is, in fact, you. But you turn out to be the f love of my life. Be a moron.
have to tell you, I've never been gladder to see my stupid big brother. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. I don't want a lot for Christmas. There's just one thing I need. I don't care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. Make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is you. Would you stay? Knowing life would always be a little bit worse. I never told your mom enough. I should have told her every day because she was perfect every day. Okay, Dad. Let's do it. Let's go get the kicked out of us by love. Yes, sir. È chiaro che io saper che che tu non non è tal loco com com io. È chiaro che io pensar che tu dici no. Ma se Natal è è so crea saper. I'm fine. I'm fine. A couple thoughts. First, a very broad gender generalization. Love Actually is on a short list of romantic films that most guys like along with The Notebook and When Harry Met Sally and Say Anything, although I personally don't like that last one. In each case, I think it's because the men are represented as vulnerable, and not either as trophies or cads, as they usually are in romances. Please believe me that this is not meant as whining. I know that Hollywood has a problem portraying women as human beings. They're usually damsels in distress or femme fatales or humorless butt kickers. But romances usually flip that sexism with their own flavor of sexism, and this movie is a rare one when the men, who are admittedly the center of most of Love Actually's narratives, are mostly presented as fully-fledged characters, and so are most of the women. Colin Frizzle's fantasy Americans are accepted. But the bulk of the cry points listed earlier came when men got a chance to break down and admit their vulnerability, which is why I think this movie ranks so high with dudes. Outside of sports films, not a lot of movies give us non-violent ways to express our affection. Secondly, a lot of the cry points happen from joy. As the Prime Minister says in the opening monologue, When the planes hit the Twin Towers, as far as I know, none of the phone calls from the people on board were messages of hate or revenge. They were all messages of love. And that's where this movie scores. The love of a rock star for his manager. The love of a stepfather getting called dad for the first time. The love in relationships that are complicated by jobs, languages, or world events. I tear up for the joy as much as I tear up for the pain. Now, I'll be totally honest. I would watch an entire two-hour, 15-minute video of nothing but the arrivals gate at Heathrow Airport. This actually happened to me once. I was waiting for my wife to arrive at the airport in Urumqi in Xinjiang, China, and she got delayed by two hours. So for two hours, I just sat there, and I watched these Uyghur families and Han families reuniting, hugging if they were Uyghur or clapping each other on the back and laughing if they were Han, and I could have cried for two hours. I probably did. So I take this movie not just as a great romantic comedy, which it is, and a family Christmas tradition, which it also is, but also as a cautionary tale. You have to stop and look sometimes. But love is actually... You realized it was all around. 